They don't look intimidating, but these power lines can be deadly. Every year in Canada, over 1,000 contacts are made with energized high-voltage power lines and equipment. In addition to these contacts, electrical substations are routinely broken into. A contact or break-in may require a response from police, fire, or EMS workers. Each contact or electrical substation break-in has the potential of placing first responders at risk of serious injury or even death. The Canadian Electricity Association, in conjunction with the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, has produced this DVD to give electrical safety guidance to those dedicated men and women who respond to incidents involving high-voltage facilities. For more information or training, contact the electric utility in your area. I can't believe John's dead. He was so young. He had such a beautiful family. How do you justify something like this? Just last week I was playing golf with him. And now he's gone. It's heartbreaking. Does anyone know exactly what happened? Yeah. John was first on scene to a car accident involving a downed power line. We responded a few minutes after, and we found him laying on the ground. Dad, look out! RCMP is Fail Control 15. 1071 NBC with injuries. Vehicle collided with power pole. Fire 911 is 1017. Hold on, I'll be right there. Although a power line might not look energized, it could be sitting silently with an electrical current running through it, waiting until someone or something contacts it. When you arrive to an emergency scene involving a downed power line, immediately perform a scene survey and assess the potential electrical hazards. Is there electrical equipment or lines involved? This could be underground or overhead. Is a downed power line part of the incident scene? Is a power line contacting or in proximity to the ground or equipment? Is the power line broken or damaged? Assume any power line is live. If the answers to any of the above points are yes, or if you're unsure, then stay a minimum of 10 meters away, which includes anything the vehicle or wire might be in contact with, like a fence. Take control of the situation and do not become a casualty. If casualties are conscious, encourage them to stay in their vehicles. Contact the electric utility and wait until a worker arrives and makes the scene electrically safe and advises you that it is safe. At an emergency scene involving power lines or electrical equipment, it is crucial to understand the concept of touch potential. Touch potential means that should you touch an energized power line or object, your body will become the path for the electrical current to flow to ground. Creating this path for current to flow may result in serious injury, even death. The safe thing to do is, wait until a power line operator arrives on scene and makes the area electrically safe and advises you that it is safe before going in.
So he was electrocuted as soon as he touched the vehicle. Yeah. He didn't realize the dangers in dealing with electricity. When you come upon an emergency scene involving anything electrical, use this analogy. You treat a gun as if it's loaded until proven safe, so you need to treat electricity as energized until proven otherwise. Here are the correct steps to take. Perform a scene survey. Assess the hazards. Do not become a casualty. Take control. Treat the power line as energized. Stay a minimum 10 meters away. Keep others away and contact the electric utility. If you are dealing with fire, take control, and if the casualty is able, instruct them how to safely exit a burning vehicle. To avoid touch potential, they must not touch the car and the ground at the same time. Have them jump clear of the vehicle and land with their feet together. Then instruct them to shuffle or hop keeping their feet together until a minimum of 10 meters away. This will prevent electricity from using a casualty as an electrical path. After instructing a casualty to safely exit a burning vehicle, secure the scene and wait until the electric utility worker arrives and makes the scene electrically safe and advises you that it is safe. It's so hard to have to wait to help someone. That goes against everything we've been trained to do. Yeah, but what help are you going to be if you get electrocuted? Good point. I always try and remember when dealing with electricity, it's not in your control, so uh, leave it alone. I learned that when I first started from someone I came to help. Rod, this is looking good. I think we're done here for today. Sure, I'll finish up this area and then we're good. Jim, are you okay? Jim, can you hear me? I'm reporting an emergency. I need help right away. Your instinct upon arriving at a scene like this will be to go in and help, but it is a potentially life-threatening situation. You might be felled by step potential first. Step potential occurs when your feet are in two different electrical voltage zones, which can result in electricity using your body as a path. Everything within a 10 meter radius of the scene might be energized. The minute a person enters the step potential zone, they might receive a shock if one foot is located in a zone of one potential while the other foot is located in a zone at a different potential. For example, if one foot is located in a zone with 10,000 volts and the other foot is located in a zone with 6,000 volts, the 4,000 volts difference will flow through the body. This is why it's crucial to wait for an electric utility worker to make the scene safe before attempting a rescue and having them advise you that it is safe. Hang on, I'm coming! Stop! Don't move! You're gonna need to wait until the electric utility worker arrives. I've called them, they should be here shortly. This whole area might potentially be energized. Thank goodness that machine operator stopped me, or I probably would have gotten shocked like his partner. What happened? The electric utility worker arrived and made everything electrically safe, and then told me it was safe to go in to help. The guy received an electrical shock, but he survived. It's like a game of Russian roulette when you deal with electricity. You never know when the bullet's going to be in the chamber. I will forever be indebted to that machine operator who told me not to run in. After that, I've always been so careful when responding to calls dealing with electricity. I mean, you never know what's going to happen, but the next time I found myself in a similar situation, I knew exactly how to handle it. So, son, I'm just going to back up and park the auger right there. Okay, Dad. Are you okay? Jamie!
I need an ambulance right away. Son, he's unconscious. Sir, I need you to stay right where you are. Is he still breathing? Yes. The entire area around you could potentially be electrically charged because your machine is still in contact with the power line. If you're called to an incident involving machinery still touching a power line, you must treat the power line as still energized. In this scenario, the farmer who jumped off the tractor was lucky that the power line had shut off when the original contact occurred or he would have received a shock. The power could also be coming back on at any time, so you must treat the line as energized and wait for the electric utility worker to arrive. Follow these steps. Perform a scene survey. Assess the hazards. Do not become a casualty. Take control. Treat the power line as energized. Stay a minimum 10 meters away. Keep others away and contact the electric utility. Remember, Electricity is the invisible killer. As soon as the electric utility worker arrives and makes everything safe, then I can come in and help you. What happened? The farmer stayed by his son and didn't move. The electric utility worker arrived, made everything electrically safe, and then told me it was safe to go in. The son survived his shock and the farmer didn't get electrocuted. There was certainly someone looking out for them that day. I have to fight every instinct to not run into a situation like that. Yeah, but look what the outcome can be. I had to call a substation break-in. And those can be deceiving because everything can look harmless, but uh, I found out it can be highly dangerous. Substation break-ins are quite common for copper theft. This is a very hazardous area, so use extreme caution when responding. Yeah, I'm on scene right now. Okay, uh, can you tell me what you see? The lock has been cut and the bolt cutter is on the ground. The gate's open. Okay, we'll have an electric uh, utility worker on scene shortly to hang tight. 10 4. When responding to a call at a substation, do not under any circumstance enter until an electric utility worker has made it safe to do so. Perform a scene survey. Assess the hazards. Do not become a casualty. Take control. Stay a minimum 10 meters away. Keep others away and contact the electric utility. You may find the utility name and contact number on the substation fence. It's a good thing you didn't enter the substation before I got here. Why? Well, last week uh, we had a substation break-in where thieves cut out a bunch of copper from the substation. This makes for a very dangerous situation, not only for you as a first responder, but also for our employees. Not knowing from what equipment the copper was cut from means that equipment that is normally grounded could very well be energized at the moment, along with the fence. You really don't know what can happen when dealing with electricity. The year I started on the police service, that was the year we had the big storm knocking all the trees and power lines down. I didn't think it was a big deal at the time. That was a call you were on regret, wasn't it? Yeah, that's why I'm so careful with electricity. So we're going to be responding to these calls probably for the next week. The storm knocked down a lot of power lines and trees. I really didn't expect to be doing this as a police officer. <laughs> Believe me, we respond to everything. Got some down power lines and trees. Line, and stuff. Yeah. Hey, is it safe to do that? Yeah, it's just a loose branch. No, but wait! Brad! Wait! Brad! No! Brad! Fallen trees leaning on power lines or scenes with downed power lines included in the debris create extremely hazardous situations. Every year across Canada, individuals receive serious injuries and even die from contacting trees that are touching an energized power line. There may be no indication at all that the power line is energized, but it may be silently waiting. Do not make assumptions. Perform a scene survey. Assess the hazards. Do not become a casualty. Take control. Treat all power lines as energized. Stay a minimum 10 meters away. 
keep others away, and contact the electric utility. Remember, anything the power line is touching could be energized. Pay particular attention to trees, fences, guardrails, train tracks, and irrigation systems. What happened to Brett? He died at the scene. Since then, I've taken any calls dealing with electricity very carefully because you just don't know what can happen. I responded to an emergency scene where a guy's backhoe started on fire after striking an underground power line. It scared the crap out of me because we're dealing with fire and electricity. Dave, did you check with First Call on where potential underground power lines could be on your property? I'm just digging a short trench. I didn't really see the point. I mean, what are the chances I'm gonna hit something? I'm not even going that deep. Yeah, I guess you're right. Oh! Oh my god! I'm calling 911! When you arrive on scene, park away from the incident. Perform a scene survey. Assess the hazards. Do not become a casualty. Take control. Stay a minimum 10 meters away. Keep others away and contact the electric utility. Incidents involving underground electrical equipment are very dangerous as the cables may not be visible. They are often sheared off and touching the bottom of the vehicles or the sides of equipment. My rig's catching on fire! Listen to me. I'll tell you how to get off your machine safely. Take control and instruct the casualty how to properly exit a burning vehicle. To avoid touch potential, they must not touch the machinery and the ground at the same time. Have them jump clear of the machine and land with their feet together. To avoid step potential, instruct them to shuffle or hop keeping their feet together a minimum of 10 meters away. After instructing a casualty to safely exit a burning vehicle, Secure the scene and wait until the electric utility worker arrives and makes the scene electrically safe and advises you that it is safe. I was really lucky that day, and so was Dave. We've all been really lucky. John was such a great guy. He was. I'm gonna miss him. Hopefully we don't have to do this again anytime soon. Electricity is the invisible killer that could be hiding silently until you come in contact with it. When responding to any emergency scene involving electricity, remember to perform these crucial steps. Perform a scene survey. Assess the hazards. Do not become a casualty. Take control. Stay a minimum 10 meters away. Keep others away. And contact the electric utility. Wait until an electric utility worker gives you permission to perform a rescue, or you might become the one needing help. For more information on responding to scenes where electricity comes into play, please contact your local electrical utility operator.